Well, we can see that Mark Mazzara, whether we agree with him or not, at least highlights the shifting situation around human rights and recognises that that's interesting and that's valid if we want to think about the history of ideas. Was it important beyond the history of ideas in the post-war world, though? Yes, I think there is one definite impact. In 1975, when all the states in Europe, East and West, signed the Helsinki Declaration of Human Rights, which is a restatement of the UN Declaration of Rights, and all these states, NATO, non-aligned, Warsaw Pact, all sign up to these. Now, the USSR signed in 1948 and in 1975, both times thinking it was a dead letter. And the satellite states of Eastern Europe also signed in 1975 on the assumption that it's not going to change very much. What surprises Eastern European regimes in the period after 75 is that groups of citizens come together, they call themselves Helsinki committees, and they start saying to the ruling communist parties in these countries, you've signed on the dotted line saying we've got rights, now you must deliver. This is a weapon that's used by these peoples against their rulers, and it's one of the things that feeds into 1989. OK, but if I can just put a very small fly in the ointment here, you're quite right that these ideas are extremely important, but they aren't really enough. They do need a kind of transmission mechanism to actually get those ideas to the citizens of the communist bloc. And that bloc becomes more porous in the 1970s in terms of the leakage of print material and increasingly broadcast material behind the Iron Curtain, so you get Radio Free Europe and the like. And those are the vehicles that carry those ideas across the Iron Curtain. So in a sense, there's a model of uh, a Western civic institution that is monitoring government adherence to a yardstick, in this case, the Helsinki Accords, that the Helsinki committees are aping. They're copying the West in that respect. So you need that transmission mechanism, otherwise the ideas themselves won't have that much of an effect. Yes, fair point. Uh, the idea of human rights is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Treaties are important, they're one thing, but other facts on the ground are also important as well, and I think we have to consider the whole picture. But I think it's important to end on thinking about how there is a new ideal of human rights. What we've been talking about today is that there are different kinds of peace, different kinds of peace settlement, and different ideas at what peace might involve. And minority rights are a clear example of the ways in which interwar Europe was structured differently with different expectations and different laws from post-war Europe. In the interwar period, a set of ideals and also of laws underpinning collective rights. In the post-war period, another different set of ideals and laws about individual rights. So hopefully the conversation that started with a random encounter in a second-hand bookshop has given us some insight into the ways in which we can think about long-term change in Europe and how that's reflected in international institutions.